Hello. Today we're going to talk about vacuum packing and how you can turn your freeze dryer into a marvelous vacuum packer for cur jars. We're also going to talk about how to vacuum pack uh, 7 mil mylar bags and the pros and cons of the Sealameal product. So with that, I'm Evan Rowell and this is Critical Thinking. It wasn't long after I got my freeze dryer that I discovered on the internet that I could turn it into a vacuum packer for canning jars and I'd like to pass that on to you because it works so very well. It really does. Okay now, the first thing to do is to make sure that your freeze dryer is completely defrosted and dry. Next, remove the silicone door seal. It should slip right off. And this will allow you to remove the tray shelves. Set the shelf unit on its end and disconnect the power cable. This is done by pushing up the red locking slider on the plug, pushing on the clip and pulling the plug apart. Tuck the cord into the back of the barrel and set the tray shelves aside. Replace the silicone door seal and place a freeze dryer food tray upside down on the bottom of the barrel. This will provide a flat surface upon which to place the jars. Next, make sure the vacuum pump is switched off then unplug it from the freeze dryer and plug it directly into the wall. Now, close the drain valve, place your jars into the barrel, and then close the door. You are now ready to vacuum pack the jars. To do so, simply turn on the vacuum pump for two to three minutes, after which time, turn off the vacuum pump, open the drain valve to release the vacuum, open the door, and inspect the jars to make sure the lids are secure. Reverse this process to get the freeze dryer ready to do another bat. Now, before I go any further, I, I want to tell you about what you need to do to prepare a jar for going into the vacuum packer. This lip has to be very, very clean, okay? It has to be clean and it has to be dry. And then this lid, it has to be new, okay? That, that's really important. It has to be new. You don't use a used lid on this, and it too has to be clean. And you go ahead and set that on there. Now, most people will tell you that you don't even need the ring if you're going to vacuum pack a jar in a vacuum packer machine, and they're right. Generally, you don't. As a matter of fact, with the um, uh, vacuum packer attachment that comes with a food saver, um, you don't use the ring. You put it right on there, and the vacuum will actually suck that lid right down. But I like to use the ring in this instance because it holds the lid center so it doesn't get shifted while you're putting it in the machine and then when I tighten when I when I screw it down I don't go any further than when it stops okay I don't crank it down a little bit more I don't do anything like that I just want it to go until it stops and as soon as it stops don't go down any further and what that'll do is that'll press that lid against that um, lip of the jar and still allow air to escape when you put it in there. So it kind of, it makes it so that you can pick it up and move it around. Now I have here the jar that you see in those images. It's already been vacuum packed and that lid is on there extraordinarily tight, okay? I can, uh, I can loosen this up and take it off and I'll tell you what, that lid isn't going anywhere. That lid is actually a little bit concave here. The vacuum in here is so tight and so well made. And then I leave the ring on. I could leave the ring off, but I still leave the ring on. I tighten it down a little bit. And that vacuum pack um, will last for many, many years, okay? It, um, you won't lose it. And because what's inside of it's dry, it's not gonna deteriorate or anything. And as long as that lid stays down tight, that's gonna stay for a very, very long time. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna vacuum pack this. Now you can see that this lid is just kinda of sitting on there and that ring is just, just, just barely touching it, okay? So with that, give me just a minute and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. I went in there, I put the jar in the freeze dryer, I closed the door, I turned on the vacuum pump and left it run for about two minutes, maybe two and a half minutes. And now you can see that lid isn't going anywhere. That lid is so very, very tight. The vacuum seal, I couldn't, I don't think I could pry that off with my fingers if I wanted to, unless I wanted to break a bunch of fingernails. I'd have to use the edge of a spoon or something. But I'll leave that ring on there and I'll tighten it down. And there you have it. 
Now, I did put an oxygen absorber in here. A lot of people are under the impression that an oxygen absorber will remove all the air out of a jar, and that's just not true. As a matter of fact, when uh, they put them in these uh, Mylar bags, they think that the oxygen absorber is going to cause a vacuum seal to come over the bag too. And again, that's not true. You see, because air that we breathe is about 78% nitrogen and about 20 to 22% oxygen, and then it's got a, uh, some trace um, gases in it. But an oxygen absorber does not affect the nitrogen, which means if, you, if I put an oxygen absorber in here, and then remove 99% of the air, there's still going to be a little bit of oxygen left in here. And that oxygen absorber will take that oxygen out so that this thing essentially has nothing but nitrogen in it. And uh, if you put an oxygen absorber in a Mylar bag, you will see a little bit of um, shrinkage in the bag um, as the oxygen ab absorber does its job and pulls that 20% volume out of the bag, leaving nothing but the nitrogen, okay? So with that, that is how you take your freeze dryer and use it to vacuum pack jars. And it, it's a great way to do it. It's not really difficult um, to set it up and to do it. Um, and and, and I, I, think it's, I think it's just wonderful the way it works. Now, I wanna talk a little bit about everybody's favorite, I guess is mylar bags and how some people try to use mylar bags to seal on a um, food saver or a seal -a meal unit. There's one of those units where you put the food in this in a special bag and you put it on the unit and you close the top and you set it off and not only will it pull the air out of it but it will also when it's finished it'll seal the end and you're able to take that and uh, you know just put it in your freezer or put it wherever you want. And one of the nice things about it is that you can generally pull these out of the refrigerator and toss the whole bag in boiling water and you can cook uh, your food in these bags. So I have a food saver and I love it. Mary, my wife, uses it all the time and we, uh, it's great for short-term storage. If you're going to, and you, you want to buy some meat or something, you're going to keep it in your freezer for a long time, but then you don't want to go the route of the Mylar bags or, or anything else like that. This is wonderful. What food savers and, and um, those home vacuum packers are made for, they are wonderful for, and you can get some real quality units too. But uh, for long-term storage, this bag is not, um, will not seal out oxygen indefinitely, nor will it seal out gases like um, air and, and water and, and water vapors and stuff like that. Um, after two or three years, these bags will permeate oxygen and the oxygen will begin to affect the food inside. But if you want to store food for, you know, a year, a year or two in the freezer, these are wonderful. I, I wouldn't advise trying to use Mylar bags and, and all the, the heavy duty system. This stuff, this type of packaging, when it's done correctly, is your 30 year, you know, your 25 to 30 year storage goal. So you don't want to use this, a home um, packaging unit. And the reason that this works, besides, let me, um, let me tell you why you can't seal um, one of these effectively with a home, um, with a home uh, food saver sealer. And that's because if you'll notice this bag, this bag has ridges on it, okay? It's embossed on both sides. And what that does is that allows so that when you stick this in the sealer and then you clamp that impulse unit on it, it'll clamp it down and it'll still be able to draw air out of it even though the unit is clamped down on it. And the reason being is because of these ridges. These ridges bags are specifically designed to be able to pass air out through, um, out through the sealer uh, before the sealer heats up and actually seals the bag shut. Now, with a Mylar bag, you can't do that. These Mylar bags are, here's, here's one that I haven't sealed yet. These Mylar bags are smooth. They're very, very smooth. And if you, 
try to put one of these mylar bags in a seal a meal type unit, what's going to end up happening is it's going to clamp down and, and um, press the two sides of the bag together so completely that it won't allow it to pull air out. And then it's going to fool the machine into believing that it's got a, a tight vacuum when actually there's going to be air left inside of it. And then the unit will heat up to seal the bag. The other thing that you want to watch out for is if you want to go ahead and use your seal a meal unit anyhow and let it draw out as much air as it can, and it will draw out some, um, and then it'll seal it. It doesn't get hot enough to seal a seven mil bag. Okay, it'll seal it, it'll seal it a little bit, but the best thing that it'll do is it, it'll um, prevent air from getting back into the bag for a short period of time while you take your bag and then go over to an impulse sealer that gets hot enough and stays hot long enough and then you reseal it. Okay, so if you want to use Mylar bags and you want to use your food saver or your um, seal a meal, you can go ahead and try. But I'll guarantee you that it's not going to pull out all the air. It's not going to make a real good seal. And then you're going to have to reseal the edge because your food saver won't get hot enough. So that's, um, but, but for what they're made for, I love them. I love them. Um, they, you know, it'll, it'll keep your meat from getting freezer burned for, for a very long time. All right. So um, that seal a meal is something you want to consider uh, for the short term. But for the long term, um, sealing jars, your freeze dryer is the way to go because it'll put a marvelous seal. Here's some um, raspberries that I sealed up, that I dried and sealed up in a jar, and it works absolutely great. Now, for my little invention, I don't know if you'd call it an invention, I've never seen anybody use it before, is I like to seal things up with this unit right here. Now this little vacuum pump I bought um, you know, six or eight years ago for another project. And I'm going to show you uh, through pictures again how this thing works, how I put it together. The first thing you see in my setup, of course, is the small vacuum pump. I got it several years ago for another project and now it works great for vacuum packing Mylar bags. The pump draws into a small jar that I put in line as a particulate trap to keep solids out of the pump. You can see here how particulates will enter the jar through the long brass tube and remain in the jar because the airflow is not sufficient to draw them up to the pump side which has no extension tube. It works really well. Now the orange line is a thick walled fuel line with an eighth inch inside diameter so the line will not collapse during a vacuum procedure. Next is a commercial grade culinary injection syringe that I have repurposed to become a vacuum needle. To do this, I cut out the plunger and used a two-part liquid epoxy to secure the line into the syringe through the hole where the plunger used to be. It's very solid and it doesn't leak at all. And last but not least is the needle itself. Originally used to inject fluid into meat, it now is used to suck air out of my Mylar bags through 12 small holes at the tip of the needle. So here's how I seal a bag. In this image, you can see the corner of a sealed bag before it has been vacuum packed. Notice where the factory seal and the seal I created merge. Taking a pair of scissors, I cut the corner to very precisely leave a small gap between the two seals into which I can insert my vacuum needle. In this image, you can see the opening. Here you can see the needle inserted into the bag, and this image is from another angle. After a vacuum is drawn in the bag, I quickly pull out the needle holding the opening closed with my thumb and forefinger, after which I seal the opening closed, permanently preventing the loss of vacuum in the Mylar bag. Okay, now that you've kind of seen a close-up of it, I'm going to show you how I actually do it. I'm going to do it to this bag. This bag has some Parmesan fettuccine and cheese sauce and uh, I'm ready to vacuum pack it. As you can see, I've, I went ahead and sealed the top, and I'm going to take, like the picture shows, and I'm going to cut right across that. Now, you probably can't see it, but there is an opening right there. Um, it's sealed together. I can probably get it to open if I work it there. There, I got it. Okay, you can see that little tiny opening. And what I'll do is I'll take this needle, 
I'll take it and I'll stick it in the bag. I'll stick it in that little hole. Now, you've got to be careful because I've been known to stick it in there and actually poke through the other side of the bag. And then I turn on the vacuum sealer and I wonder why I'm not drawing a vacuum. But um, once it's in there, you make sure all your holes go down there and then you hold it. Okay? Now, you can see this bag. Now, I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. And you'll see this thing will draw a really tight vacuum. And I leave it on for a couple of minutes. I leave it, yeah, I leave it on longer than the seal -a meal will, will leave it on because, like I say, the seal -a meal will believe that it's drawn its maximum vacuum and then it'll try to seal the bag and it'll actually leave some air in there. This isn't going to leave any air in there. There's an oxygen absorber in there, and if I leave this on there for just a just maybe 30 seconds, maybe 45 seconds, um, it draws a really good vacuum. You can see it's there. And then, before I turn the unit off, oh, and another thing about this is when that hole is so small, I make sure I cut that corner off so that hole is smaller than the diameter of this needle. So when that needle goes in there, it has to stretch that hole. And by doing so, it seals the bag around the needle so it doesn't leak air in through, um, in through the hole along the side of the needle. But what I'll do is very, very quickly, I'll pull that out. And now I've got the hole closed. I've got the hole closed with my thumbs and forefinger. Now, something that I will do that's kind of important is I will lay this down and I will smooth out any wrinkles that might be in this thing. Because if there's a wrinkle in this thing, then it's not going to seal properly with that uh, impulse sealer. So now that I know that I've got a nice, clean, flat edge, I'll put it on the impulse sealer and very quickly seal it down. And there you have it. Very well vacuum packed. Any oxygen that might be left in there is going to be absorbed by the oxygen absorber. And now this package is good for 30 years. I don't have to worry about it. I can put it on the shelf. I can put it on the box. I can do what I want with it. And uh, it works very well. Now, I really like these little one pint bags. Again, they're seven mil. But I found it was very difficult to try to get these things to seal um, with this method by cutting the corner because it has a, um, a resealable zipper on it. So what I do with this, now I've got brown sugar in this thing. Okay, just it was some, um, some of the other brown sugar with these. As a matter of fact, I have three of them right here. Each one of them has one cup of brown sugar in it. And what I do is I will take this needle and I will poke a hole right in the middle, about halfway between the top and that zipper. Okay? And once that hole is there, I'll go ahead and close this up a little bit. I'll start the zipper on both sides, but I won't complete it all the way across because I need to have some of that open. And what I'll do now is I'll take and I'll put this bag on the impulse sealer and I'll seal the entire bag all the way across above, above that hole. I'll seal it right across here. So let's go ahead and do that. You have to be careful because you haven't got a whole lot of room to work with. Okay, I inspect the seal. It's a good seal. And you got this hole here. Now it's that hole that I stick my needle in, but I won't stick it down into the product. The product is still behind that zipper, and I'm able to stick the needle in along the top between the zipper and the, the first seal. And so when I turn that on, it's going gonna, it's gonna to suck that bag down really, really hard. Again, air will pass through this because I haven't closed that in the middle. And this thing actually gets rock hard, okay? This gives it an absolute seal, about 30 seconds worth. You can see the outline of the needle right here. You can see the zipper right here. And that's about good.
again I pull the needle out and you have to be you have to be quick with these because these bags being so small if you're not quick and you leave that hole open for just even a second uh, you're going to lose some of the vacuum but here's the nice thing about the zipper now I can go along with my thumb and I can close this zipper now even then you can't just throw it on a shelf because very quickly you will lose the vacuum but what I do now is I seal it again between the zipper and the hole I'll go right along here so I'm going to set this on there okay and I'm going to seal it okay with that seal being below the vacuum hole um, the vacuum in here is permanent now and um, it's a really good vacuum I'm really pleased with the way that these bags uh, do what they do you you just couldn't get the same kind of a vacuum or the same kind of a you know you know good hard um, tough feel if you're using the four or five or even you know the three mil bags um, that's why I always use the seven mil bags and inside of here is one cup of brown sugar and I will do that too I will um, package things in smaller quantities uh, so that I don't always have to dig into the to the bigger ones this is brown sugar this is also brown sugar and then of course these are my raspberries okay so for a quick recap um, we talked about how turning you can turn the freeze dryer into a vacuum packer and you can vacuum pack your um, mason jars and it works very very well these are very very tightly packed and uh, or vacuum is a very very intense vacuum in these and so much so that the tops and the lids are concave I mean it's really it's really pulling them in the second thing that we talked about of course was the home um, um, packaging and a vacuum packing system like the food saver and the um, oh I can't remember I can't remember what the name of the other one was that's that's most common but anyhow you know for what they're designed to do they do that very very well I have one and um, we use it when we for short-term storage and they're not designed for long-term storage you don't think that you're gonna pack something and throw it in the freezer and and keep it in there for 25 years it's just not going to happen okay then we talked about my uh, vacuum pump and my my little basting or injection needle this thing is so perfect it's almost as if it was designed for the purpose that I use it for uh, being pointed being able to push it into the bags being able to draw the vacuum and then being able to seal the hole up so that the vacuum maintains so with that um, I would ask that you subscribe to my channel, that you uh, hit the notification bell, and share. Uh, I'm sure that there's other people that would like to, uh, to see what I have to offer. And also, um, you'll see my address right there. I'm a professional photographer, and I have a gallery, and I would appreciate it very much if you'd visit my gallery. There's a link in the, in the header, and um, I'll put all other pertinent links down below. But, if you've never seen my fireworks before, you need to check them out. I can, I can make a boring firework look like a, a bouquet of flowers. And uh, so you have to check that out. My water drop photography, I, I'm pretty proud of that too. So with that, I'll, I'll leave it there. I'm Evan Rowell, and this is Critical Thinking.